In today's video, I'm going to discuss and hopefully settle the seemingly age-old debate as to who has the right of way when merging in lanes. This could be a slip road or on a dual carriageway where two lanes merge into one, or on a motorway where five lanes merge into four, or four into three, or three lanes merge into two. Either way, very often there will be an arrow marking on the road indicating that one lane should be merging with the other. But in this situation, everyone has the question as to who has the right of way. And as usual, the simple answer is very short and there is a much longer explanation, which I think is worth discussing to hopefully settle this debate once and for all. But first of all, if you're new to me, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law, so please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. I also take your questions on live streams on Sunday and I answer them at Black Belt Secrets, linked below. So the simple answer to this debate as to who has the right of way is no one. No one has the right of way. The right of way suggests that one vehicle or one driver has the right over another vehicle to go first. And that's simply not the case. And we can see this very clearly from the very outset of the Highway Code. At the very start of the Highway Code, in the overview, it says this section should be read by all drivers, motorcyclists, cyclists and horse riders. The rules in the Highway Code do not give you the right of way in any circumstance, but they advise you when you should give way to others. Always give way if it can help to avoid an incident. So that's the simple and shortest answer to this age old debate as to who has the right of way when merging in lanes. The answer is no one. No one has this right to go first when merging in lanes. But obviously the longer answer is a little bit more complicated and warrants some discussion and explanation. And so before we get into some examples of lanes and merging and you see my expert drawing of vehicles, let's look to the highway code as to which rules provide some advice and guidance as to lane discipline. These can be found in rules 133 to 143. And again with the broad outline, rule 133 states, if you need to change lane, first use your mirrors and if necessary, take a quick sideways glance to make sure you will not force another road user to change course or speed. When it is safe to do so, signal to indicate your intentions to other road users and when clear, move over. So this is a very generic guidance on how you should move from one lane to another. Obviously you should use your mirrors, you should take a glance sideways if necessary. And importantly, the guidance says that this is to ensure that you are not going to force another road user to change course or speed. And then only when it's safe to do so and the road is clear, you would indicate and then move over. So how about when there are signs and road markings? Well, rule 134 follows on quite neatly. You should follow the signs and road markings and get into lane as directed. In congested road conditions, do not change lanes unnecessarily. Merging in turn is recommended, but only if safe and appropriate when vehicles are traveling at very low speed. For example, when approaching roadworks or a road traffic incident it is not recommended at high speed. So aside for some reasons for using the second and or third and fourth lanes of a road, that's about all the highway code has to say on lane discipline and merging into lanes. First of all, no one has any right of way. And secondly, it advises that you should only move over when it's safe and clear to do so. And just as an aside, it should be obvious to everyone that if you are on a slip road joining another road, such as the example shown, and for example, joining the motorway, this is covered in rule 259. And obviously you should be giving way to traffic that is already on the other road or the motorway. 259 reads, when you join the motorway, you will normally approach it from a road on the left, a slip road, or from an adjoining motorway. You should, Give priority to traffic already on the motorway, check the traffic on the motorway and match your speed to fit safely into the traffic flow in the left hand lane, not cross solid white lines that separate lanes or use the hard shoulder, stay on the slip road if it continues as an extra lane on the motorway, remain in the left hand lane long enough to adjust the speed before considering overtaking. So this should hopefully isolate and clear up any situation where it is clearly a slip road because there is a lane divider which shows that this is a slip road merging onto another lane. In this situation, you should be giving way 
to traffic that is already in the main road. But again, as a reminder from the outset of the highway code, these rules do not give any right of way to any car or another. And as with most other cases, every incident that happens on the road is going to be looked at from a standpoint of factual events as to what happened and whether and to the extent that each driver was driving safely, considerately, and ultimately which driver will be to blame for the incident or whether it was joint liability. So let's consider for a moment why these debates come up in the first place. It's quite clear that when two lanes are merging into one and there's an arrow on the floor telling cars to merge over to the left, that all vehicles are supposed to end up in the left-hand lane. So what happens when you get a car coming down on the outside lane here and trying to move over at the last minute? It. Very often the front car will take exception to this, not allow the car in, and ultimately they come together and there is a collision here, what is often known as a merge collision. What should ideally be happening here is that the car that needs to change lanes should be considering when it's safe to do so, in accordance with the highway code. If there is already a car in the left-hand lane ahead of the merging car, then the merging car should check the vehicle behind to see whether there is enough space in between the two and safely merge into the gap. On the other hand, if the merging car is already ahead of the vehicles in the left-hand lane, such as shown here, then the cars in the left-hand lane should ideally be giving way to the merging car because that would be safer to do so. Taking this to the common motorway scenario where you've got a three-lane motorway and the third lane is merging into the middle lane, a queue of cars or vehicles in the left-hand lane and a queue building up in the middle lane. Invariably what happens here is most cars will queue in this middle lane and you'll get one or two vehicles coming down in the outside lane, slowly pushing their way to join the front of the queue. Very often in this situation the front car takes exception to the car trying to get in and so does every car behind them and they squeeze up together trying to prevent the car coming in until eventually one car gives in and lets the vehicle in. So today I'd like to pour some cold water over all of this frustration, because this is not how this lane merge is supposed to work. Instead of the inevitable standoff of not letting cars in at the front and thinking that they've jumped the queue, both lanes are supposed to be used to the full capacity and each car should merge in turn. This will significantly reduce the overall length of the queue and reduce waiting times. I have no doubt that a great many drivers will have been in this situation where the roads are merging up ahead either as a permanent fixture of the motorway or because there is a temporary road closure and the signs have been put up indicating that the road ahead is blocked and that you need to move over. In this situation and possibly due to the British etiquette of queuing, most people will get in line as soon as possible so there will be one long queue of traffic in the lane into which the other lane is to merge. However, and for some of you I understand this might take some persuasion, but those drivers that are coming down in the open and clear lane and only moving over at the very last minute are not actually doing anything wrong by doing so. Allow me to explain. If every single car were to get into the left lane as soon as possible, leaving the outside right lane perfectly clear for a mile or two, this is ultimately a waste of road and this can significantly increase the overall length of the queue. Whereas if both lanes are utilized and each car merges in turn, in accordance with rule 134 of the highway code, that cars should merge in turn if it's safe to do so at a slow enough speed, this is going to be much more efficient in getting all of the traffic through that point a lot more quickly and ultimately reduce the overall length of the queue. And believe it or not, there is actually a term for this, which is zip merging, which I believe originated in the United States because the two lanes coming together to form one looks a little bit like a zip. And ultimately, as I said, if both lanes are utilized until that zipping merge point, then the overall length of the queue is going to be reduced and traffic will move through a lot more quickly. And it goes without saying that it is always better that drivers are courteous to each other, they remain aware of other road users, be that another car, lorry, cyclist, motorcyclist, and so on. Because if ever an incident comes to court, say for liability and personal injury, all the circumstances will be taken into account, including any eyewitness account of how the vehicles were traveling and driving at the time. Because remember, the highway code says that the rules do not give anyone the right of way, they only indicate when you must stop 
or indicate that you should give way. So I hope not too many of you are too disappointed that the cars coming down in the outside lane to merge at the last minute are not actually doing anything wrong. But as always, feel free to disagree and leave your comments down below. But please do like this video if you found the discussion useful. And remember, stay humble and subscribe.